If you're like most marketing centers here at CB Richard Ellis, then you probably have a system in place for proofing or tracking changes to a document. For an example, if you're a desktop publisher, you just created this document, you're going to send it to a colleague or your manager to have them proof the document before it goes to print. In the traditional sense of the way, uh, you probably are using something like Acrobat, which is a great program for proofing, by the way. But new here in CS5 is a feature called Track Changes, which allows us to track the changes that are made in the document. But there's several steps that you have to take before you can use this feature. I'm going to show you how to do that here. The first thing that you have to do is go up to the file menu and create a user for this particular document. So here I might type in Stephen Pierce and assign myself a color. Orange is a good color and click OK. The next thing that I'll want to do is go up to the window menu editorial and select track changes and that will launch a new panel called track changes now the panel by default has some icons here and we're going to go over those but i've assigned myself a user to this document i've launched a track changes panel there is yet one more step that i have to do that is to launch the flyout menu let me try or click on this story Click on the story and then click track changes in this particular story. Now I can also do that to an entire document, but in this case I only have one story uh, in this document. So I'm going to go ahead and make changes to it. One of the changes I'm going to make is I have this capital lettering down here at the bottom. I'm just going to change the font size to that. And then uh, I'm going to come down here and do one of my favorite sins, capital INC. Now I've made some changes. Now let's say you've gone through as the colleague who's making the edits or changes to this document and you're sending it back to the desktop publisher. If the desktop publisher hasn't assigned them, their, themselves a user to the document yet, they would go ahead at this point and assign a new user to this document. So in this case, I'm going to change this user to John Doe, and I'm going to change the color to pink. And I'll click OK. So up until this point, changes were made, but we really haven't seen those changes fully take effect. Or we have, but we just can't see it from a bird's eye view. I mean, there's nothing really to indicate that changes were made here. That's because the track changes feature in InDesign works hand in hand with the story editor. And we covered the story editor in an earlier movie. So in this case, this is one of those reasons why you would want to use the story editor here. I'm going to hit control I on my keyboard to launch the story editor. And as I come down, we'll see that InDesign has highlighted some changes made within this document by Stephen Pierce with the color orange. And I know it was Stephen because if I click on that color within the story editor, here in the track changes, it's going to show me the name of the person that made the change, the time and the date, and what was changed. So in this case, text was uh, deleted. And then there is also an edit made down below here, which I can see by an icon. So I have some options here across the top. And if you hover your mouse over any of these options, it basically tells you what they do. The first one, which looks like a power button, will allow me to disable tracking changes in this particular story. So if there were, were a lot of changes in here and I don't necessarily want my boss to see them, ahem. <clears throat> I didn't tell you that, but uh, <laughs> then I could simply disable that. Um, but it's all in good fun. 
and uh, productivity, right? So uh, our next icons, we can go forward and backwards to the changes. We can approve the change. We can reject the change. We can reject the change in the story, and we can reject the change in the entire document. Just really depends on what we want to do. And if we click on the flyout menu, we can also see here that we can go to the previous or the next, next change, uh, accept the change, reject the change, Accept change, find the next one, reject change, find the next one, accept all changes either in the story or in the document, or do likewise, but reject all changes in this story or in this document. Or if it's a particular user, we can just go ahead and accept all changes by this particular user in the story or document, or reject all the changes by this user in this story or this document. So if I close that out, and I'm currently logged in as the user John Doe for this document. I can see Stephen Pierce made that change. And I'm going to reject that change. And you'll see when I reject it, it reverts it back to the original, not only in the storyteller, but also in the original document as well. And it kind of highlights that document where that change was made now that I'm in this mode. You can see it down here at the bottom where the color of that font has changed slightly. And now I'm going to go to the next change. And the next change is basically going to tell me who made the change and so forth, and I can reject it. So this is a really nice way as part of that proofing process to track changes that were made. So if you send this document off, whoever receives that document for proofing, just remember you first A, Assign yourself as a user to the document, and then launch the Track Changes palette. Once you've launched the Track Changes palette, you enable, by clicking on the flyout menu, tracking changes to this story. But you've got to make sure that the story is selected. If I unselect it here, then I'm no longer tracking the changes made. But you can see after I've changed that storyteller, I'm no longer focused on this section of uh, the document and it reverts back to its normal state.